right. Well, welcome. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk to talk to you about how to prove that the derivative of e to the x equals e to the x, and then we'll talk about the other exponential function um, and how to prove that the derivative of a to the x equals um, a to the x natural log of a. Some of our students sometimes have confusion on this. So, without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to use the definition of a derivative. So we're going to take the limit. All right, as h approaches zero, and what is h? Well, we're going to use the function f of x plus h minus f of x over h, and whatnot. So, um, what we're going to have is we're going to have e to the x plus h, all right, minus e to the x over h. Okay. Now, in doing so. Um, we're going to do a little math magic here. All right, we're going to simplify this expression a little bit. And we're going to have e to the x right there um, times e to the h here minus e to the x there. And that's going to be all over h. Now, as you go through, you notice that we have e to the x and e to the x. Well, we're going to take the limit now. And we're going to factor out that e to the x. All right, e to the x right here. Now what we have is e to the h minus 1 all over h. All over h. Um, as you see this right here, okay, as you see this right here, what's going to happen is this limit is going to be approaching a value. Now, um, what we can do is we can do some analysis on this. All right, and we can use some different things, but if you would take this limit and you could put it in your calculator or whatnot, this limit of e to the h minus one over h, this limit, using the product limit, this limit right here is approaching zero. All right, so this portion right there, I'm gonna bracket it in right there, that's gonna be approaching zero, actually not zero, I mean one, that approaches one. All right, well, that approaches one, we're gonna have that times e to the x, okay? So as h approaches zero, this approach is 1. And e to the x, well, e to the x doesn't change because there is no h here. So e to the x just stays e to the x. So now we have e to the x times 1, because this limit, once again, approaches 1, and h approaches 0, all right? Because we have an indeterminate form, 0 over 0, all right? Um, we can do some other uh, math involved with this, or um, you can put in your calculator and figure that out. Um, um, do some analysis. Um, but what we have then is this is equal to e to the x. Is equal to e to the x. So we just verified using this definition of a derivative that yes, the derivative of e to the x equals e to the x. Now this is very important because this actually will allow us to help us find all the other derivatives, all right, um, that we want to do. So for example, let's say we have this algebraic, we're going to do a little algebraic proof here. Knowing that we have e to the x here, um, we're going to verify that the derivative of e to the x equals e to the x central log of a. Now to do this, we're going to take the derivative of a to the x, which is the same thing as writing e to the x natural log of a. Now, some of you might be wondering, where is that algebra coming from? Um, well, if you recall, um, if we have a to the x, we can actually, um, e to the, we can rewrite that as natural log of a to the x. We are just rewriting this into a similar form because these are inverse properties e to the natural log of a to the x actually equals a to the x. Using the logarithmic property of exponentials, um, we can plug that um, exponential to the, as a coefficient of natural log, and so we have this. Now, from here, um, we are now going to um, do a derivative. We're going to take the derivative of e to the x natural log of a. Okay, so I want to just erase this now. Um, we have that for now. So now I'm going to do a little derivative. We already know what e to the x is. So we got that going for us, which is nice. So now we're going to take this, and we're going to take the derivative of e to the x natural log of a. Well, we're going to use the pain rule, because x is in the exponent. All right? Um, so we know that e to the x natural log of a, all right? So the derivative of e to the u, u being x natural log of a. All right? So then we can write this as e to the u. And so now we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to u first. 
And we know the derivative of e to the u, just like e to the x is e to the u. Well, now we have to take the derivative of u with respect to x. That's a chain rule, if you recall. All right, let's make that pretty big. All right, so what we have is what's the derivative of u? Well, the derivative of u with respect to x is x natural log of a. Well, we don't have to use the product rule because natural log of a is a number, right? It's a value, it's a constant. All right, it's coefficient of x, actually. Um, so what we have is, this is going to be e to the u, u, I'm just going to put that back in there, x natural log of a. And then what we have right here, then, is what's the derivative of x natural log of a? Well, that's simply just natural log of a. Well, you might be wondering, hey, that's not the same as up there. All right, well, a to the x natural log of a. Um, we just verified before that that right there was actually the same thing as a to the x. I just wrote it out and erased it. Apologize. But now we have x log of a. Hey, now that looks awfully familiar. I can take that, move it, whoop, keep on moving it up. And you can see that, yes, 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 yes. That is the same, not written as nicely. But yeah, the derivative of a to x equals a to x times log of a. Okay, so here are the two kind of proof, one algebraic, one is an investigation proof. Um, um, understanding that you guess you have to know that e to the h minus one over h, um, moving at h equals zero equals one. But those kind of prove um, the exponential, the derivative of exponential functions, basically. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna go through some examples on how to use this.